everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and we are talking about the OWASP Top 10 2021 list. And in this video, we're going to talk about the number one security risk, and that is broken access control. Broken access control moves up from the fifth position back in 2017, the, the uh, previous version of the OWASP Top 10. And of the applications that were tested for you know, these different security risks from the OWASP uh, organization, 94% of applications uh, had some form of broken access control. And the average incident rate was like 3.8% you know, of, uh, of all the different you know, components of these applications. But almost 100% of applications had some form of broken access control. All right, um, this, this broken access control had the most occurrences in the data set that OWASP uh, you know, reviewed, over 318,000 occurrences of this. All right, so the, the fundamental idea of broken access control is that you have an application, so I'll just put you know, app right here, and you have users that want to access the application, right? But then you also have attackers who are trying to do bad things to the application, and you wanna let these good users in and you wanna block the bad attackers, right? And so there needs to be some kind of access controls um, you know, built in to your application. One of the issues with this is that there's so many different endpoints. So, you, I mean, you've got APIs that are defined here within the application. You've got you know, a lot of different URLs that might be visited, whatever it is. And so you know, you've got a, a lot of different entry points into this thing. And so there needs to be controls around the application to let the good pre people in and, let, and keep the bad people out, right? Um, and so typically failures around access control will lead to things like information disclosure, um, information modification. You can delete, you know, these attackers may delete all your data, um, you know, those kinds of things. So it's, it's a really bad thing. That's why it's the number one on the list right now. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a couple of examples here. We'll talk through some more general things and I'll tell you some ways to kind of, you know, protect against this. Okay. So let's say you go to an API endpoint on an application and you change the ID on that. If you're able to see different messages from changing the ID of the API endpoint, then that's not good. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have an API endpoint like mail.example.com slash messages, all right, and then um, messages. And then um, let's say um, the, the ID is, you know, one, two, three, four, right? So you've got this mail.example.com slash message or messages, uh, one, two, three, four. All right. Uh, what's happening here is if you change that ID to maybe, you know, five, six, seven, eight, instead of one, two, three, four, what's happening behind the scenes or kind of under the hood here is uh, typically it's a, a SQL or a database call that says something like, um, you know, select, uh, select ID, um, you know, and data, data from, from messages, right? Messages, which is this right here, uh, where, where ID, ID equals, you know, one, two, three, four, right? So on this, on the back end of this, on this, on this database call, um, if if this does not, you know, look for, um, if or if this does not sanitize the input and control the access to only allow the authorized person to gain access to that, then you know, if you were to change that to five, six, seven, eight, then that would change the structure of this, uh, or it would change the contents of this of this SQL message to be, you know, ID equals five, six, seven, eight, and then you would be able to see it, and that's not good, right? So what you could do as well is you could add in a bit here. You could say, you know, where ID equals the message ID, and then you could also put all and, you know, owner, um, you know, owner equals proper owner kind of a thing. Uh, you know, so I'll just put owner <laughs> equals equals owner. Uh, that's that's a bad, that's maybe bad syntax, but you know, the or the message message dot owner message dot owner equals the owner. So, but the point here is that you want to check not only that the ID is correct, but that the actual owner is the one that can access that message. So now you're kind of doing doing that extra check. So you've, you've put control 
on the access to who can gain access to that API endpoint, right? Okay, um, talking about a couple of uh, access control vulnerability, like common access control vulnerabilities, uh, the, these, these would be things like um, violation of the principle of least privilege or deny by default, right? Where access should only be granted to uh, capabilities or roles or users um, that, you know, that, that should be given those roles or users or, you know, capabilities, but instead it's given to anyone, right? So the least privilege is basically, hey, only give someone the least amount of privilege that they need to do their job, but if that starts to expand, um, then you've got problems, right? So uh, the principle of least privilege is good. Um, another one is when you bypass access control checks by modifying the URL um, or the HTML page or using some kind of attack tool to modify API requests. So it's similar to what we talked about here. Um, another one would be uh, permitting the viewing or editing of someone else's account um, by providing a unique identifier, which actually that's, that's uh, what we were talking about here, this insecure direct object reference. Um, or that horizontal access, if you will. Um, another, another one uh, dealing with APIs is um, accessing an API with missing access controls for like post and put and delete. So if you don't have controls around the methods that the API you know, uh, is able to, to handle, then you could access data that way. And so that's a, that's a broken access control, right? Um, and then another one that I'll just mention is force browsing to unauthenticated pages as an unauthenticated user or maybe even to privileged pages when you're a standard user. So maybe you do have uh, you know, authenticated access, but if you're a standard user, you should not be able to get to a, uh, a privileged page, right? So I'll give you an example of that. So maybe using a URL example, and I'll just come right up here to, to draw it. Let's say you have, you know, example, example.com.com uh, slash, um, you know, app slash get, get info, right? So if you are able to get to that um, as, an uh, as an unauthenticated user, then that's not good because you're getting info about the app, right? And if you had that same thing, uh, let's say you had, you know, example.com. Again, these, this is my penmanship's getting bad here. Sorry about that slash app slash um, admin uh, underscore, you know, get info type of a, you know, let's say you have that URL, then if you are, um, and if you're not an admin, you should not be able to get to that. So this is one of these, an unauthenticated user should not be able to get to either one of these and a non-admin should not be able to get to this. So, so as to say it separately, you know, differently, an admin is the only one that ought to be able to access that URL. So some people can force browse to these target URLs, and if you gain access, then that's a problem. So that's broken access control. All right, so a couple ways to, uh, to prevent this or to kind of help with this. Um, number one I would mention is uh, deny by default. So that's a good thing to do just uh, in your app, you know, applications. Uh, you can also implement access control mechanisms once and then reuse them throughout the application, right? So uh, implement once and then reuse, right? You also um, should enforce record ownership rather than accepting that a user can create or read or update or delete that CRUD um, any record, right? So you need to enforce record ownership. Uh, another one is log access control failures. So this is kind of gets into monitoring and logging, uh, but you need to log these failures and then you'll be able to know like, hey, I'm checking my logs and I can see when, when these problems happen. Um, another thing, uh, getting back to API, is rate limit APIs and, uh, and, and controller access uh, to minimize harm from automated attack tooling. That happens all the time. I mean, you've got these attackers come in with botnets and automated tools and all that, and so you can rate limit uh, you know, some of these, uh, uh, the, the APIs, right? So uh, the last thing that I would mention is um, that good access control uh, features are hard to add to an application late in the development life cycle. So make sure you start this early. Think about the security and, and specifically in this case, access control features early on in the development life cycle of this application. So those are a few things to, uh, to think about with respect to broken access control, the number one 
security risk on the OWASP Top 10 2021 list. So thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. Hey, if you like this thing, click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.